Welcome. We have here a disk of continuous charge distribution. So think of a filled in circle, not a uh, shallow circle, but a full disk. And we want to find the electric field from it along its axis. So one thing that we might want to do is we might want to redraw this, right? That this might be a side view, whereas this is a face view. We want to think about how to add up all of the pieces of this disk. And so adding them point by point could work, but might be a little bit tough. Adding them line by line doesn't really match with the symmetry of the circle. But what we could do is we could build it up by using rings. So if I have a ring like this, then I could also write build another ring. like this. And so these rings match the symmetry of the disk. And as three blue, one brown said, right, if you match the symmetry of your shape, mathematics tends to, right, <laughs> um, reward you for this. So if we were to build it out of these individual rings, then, right, that's what's saying that we're building a ring like this and like this. So each ring is going to be of radius r. Whereas the entire shape is going to be right a radius b. So we know that the electric field of a ring is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught zq over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves in the z hat direction. Except each of these rings is going to be very, very small. So we want to think about, right, the DE of the ring is going to be all of this just with DQ. And now we have, right, a two-dimensional shape. So we could use, right, dq equals lambda dl for one dimensional shapes, but we want to use dq equals sigma da for 2D shapes, sigma or eta. So then we need to think, right, what the da for an individual ring is. So what we can think about this ring is, right, cutting it and then splitting it open. So right, we have one cut over here, one cut over here, and then in between would be what we split open. So if we think about it, right, this length corresponding to this length is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, and then this width from here to here is how thick we go, which we need to be a very small thing. The other way to think of it is, right, how far we go is also a small distance in r. And I'm going from a slightly smaller version of r to a slightly larger version of r. So this would be dr. So our dq would then be eta times 2 pi r dr. And so the DE of our ring, this R and this R are going to be the same, is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Z times my DQ, which is eta 2 pi R dr over Z squared plus R squared to the 3 halves Z hat. So this is the DE of my ring. And now, right, the DE of the disk would be adding up all of the rings. So the smallest ring I can add has a radius of 0. The largest ring I can have has a radius of b. So we'd have then that the electric field of our disk would be an integral starting from 0, ending at b, of all of this. So 
we will get uh, quite a bit of simplification very soon. Z eta 2 pi r dr over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves z hat. First thing we can do is we can cancel these pi's out nicely enough. And then we can also do a little bit of pulling out other things. We can cancel right the 2 before leaving a 2. This 2, this epsilon naught, this z, this eta, none of them depend upon r, so we can pull them out of the integral. So we have eta z over 2 epsilon naught, and now we have this integral of just a little bit less, r dr over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. My z hat right is also constant, but we don't have to put it on right a specific side. And then we can see that we could do a u equals right u, u equals r squared, and then du would be two pi r or two r dr. Or we can just look it up in a table, and so we get the integral of this a to z over two epsilon naught is we get negative one over the square root of z squared plus r squared. And then we have to evaluate this from 0 to the radius b, still in this z hat direction. So the electric field of our disk is eta z over 2 epsilon naught, and then negative 1 over square root z squared plus b squared minus negative 1 over square root of z squared. So one thing that we can do is we can distribute the z, and then we get the electric field of our disk is eta over 2 epsilon naught. And we can also write distribute this negative sign to just over here just to make our lives a tiny bit easier. Or no, no, we don't want to do that. Sorry, negative negative gives us 1. We can bring this over. So we have z over the square root of z squared minus z over the square root of z squared plus b squared. So z squared, z over square root of z squared, this just becomes 1. And so the electric field of our disk B is kind of a rough thing to use, so we'll just go back to R being the radius of the disk. So eta over 2 epsilon naught, 1 minus z over the square root of z squared plus the radius of the disk squared in the z hat direction. So if R is much, much larger than z. If we are very, very close to the disk, or if the disk is very, very large, we can call this the electric field of an infinite disk. And write any infinite disk can also be thinking of as an infinite plane. Then this electric field of this infinite plane is going to be eta over 2 epsilon naught. The 1 stays, but if r is much, much larger, then this entire term goes to 0. So we just get this 1 z hat. So if our disk is very, very large, or if we're very, very close to the disk, then we get a constant electric field. 